It has been estimated that Eos came into existence some 4.5 billion years ago. Ancient myths tell tales of six protector gods who first alighted upon Eos in the ancient Solheim era. Fossils thought to be remains of the oldest members of the human race were discovered in the Pistala region. Some claim that humans discovered fire in the Sukarp region even before the dawn of the Solheim civilization. According to legend, the fire god Ifrit first bestowed his burning wisdom upon a man who later sat the throne of Solheim. The mechanized civilization of Solheim is presumed to have originated in the Disguy and Klain regions. Exactly when the civilization rose and fell, however, remains the subject of much investigation. The enormous crevasse separating the regions of Klain and Disguy is known as Telpar Crag. It is here that the War of the Astrals is said to have taken place. When Ifrit tried to reduce mankind to ash, the other gods fought back, and some claim this clash caused the collapse of Solheim. It is said that Ifrit, having lost the War of the Astrals, was interred atop the Rock of Rabato. After the war, the ice goddess Shiva allegedly sank into a deep slumber, nestled in the Gorvas Rift of Volup. To this day, no one knows what became of the blade god, Bahamut. The earth god Titan can be seen supporting the meteor at the heart of the disk of Kothis in the sky. As for the storm god Rama, Legend has it he sealed himself away within Foshaw Hollow in the sky. The sea goddess Leviathan disappeared in the wake of the war. Some say she swam below the waves and slumbers beneath the city of Altitia. Some 2,000 years ago, the gods granted Somnus Lucis Kylum two gifts. The sacred stone and ring. With these in hand, he founded the kingdom of Lucis. In the centuries since, Lucis has managed to expand its territory while struggling to suppress a parasitic plague. As of ME722, Moore's Lucis Kylum sits the throne as the 112th monarch of his line. Regis Lucis Kylum is King Moore's firstborn son and first in line to succeed his father. Angelguard, off the coast of Golden Key, is an uninhabited island that Lucians regard as sacred ground. Ancient texts tell of a monster known as Adagium supposedly sealed away within, but investigations into its existence have yet to provide conclusive evidence. Soon after the establishment of the kingdom of Lucis, House Fulorae founded the nation of Tenebrae. The Empire began its occupation of Tenebrae in ME359 a move that was initially met with much apprehension. In order to assuage the dissenters, the Empire preserved the Oracle's home of Fenestala Manor. This concession was partially made for political purposes. House Florey enjoys close ties with the line of Lucis. The Accordo Protectorate has developed into a bustling league of towns at the heart of maritime trade. In ME606, the Empire won an important battle against the Allied forces of Lucis and Accordo and in turn, annexed the Protectorate. The country is steeped in traditions and cultures that are incompatible with Imperial rule, so the Empire has permitted it a measure of relative political autonomy. Centuries after the founding of Lucis, a movement to revive the lost civilization of Solheim arose around the Weltham region. Leading the charge was House Aldercat, whose brave deeds brought about the rise of the Niflheim Empire. The Empire built upon Solheim's magic technology and employed it for military use. This new firepower helped the Empire fell its foes, taking Tenebrae in ME359 and Accordo in ME606. As of ME722, under the direction of Emperor Aedilus Aldercat, the Empire is developing new arms fusing Magitech with demons. Vestiges of the ancient Solheim civilization can still be seen in the ruins of Piteus and Steel of Grove. Several ancient structures also dot the forest of the Fall Grove that encircles Castlemark Tower. 
Excavation of these various sites is currently underway. In ME 501, during an expedition in the Ulwat region, the Imperial Army discovered a new species known as demons. Perhaps uh, I'd best cover up. Adagium. That is what the Lucians call the monster they imprisoned for 2,000 long years. His powers surpass those of any mortal and his body is all but impervious to attack. It's no wonder the Founder King sealed him away on the Isle of Angel Guard. He undoubtedly feared this monster might challenge his reign. It seems fortune smiles upon me. Though the Lucians kept him locked away for 2,000 years, I've managed to secure Adagium for myself. The raging winds and stormy seas may have cast all others away, but the waves parted for me that day and led the way. While I've yet to conduct any official research, the potential he proved in combat was most promising. I estimate his powers easily surpass anything mankind has ever seen. Perhaps this streak of luck has just begun. Demons were first officially recognized as a new species roughly 200 years ago. According to ancient texts, however, humans have suffered from a parasitic plague wrought by the demons for upward of two millennia. Demonification is caused by a mutant strain of plasmodia that takes root in living creatures and changes their cellular structures. Infected creatures begin to disperse miasmal particles, the spread of which is known as the Star Scourge. This model is a replica made from plaster poured into a demon-shaped cavity discovered deep underground. Demons sublimate when their vital functions cease, so this particular specimen must have vaporized after the mud around it had already solidified. Scientists believe this subject burrowed into the earth in order to shield itself from the light of the sun.
By my estimation, the grotesque creatures depicted here are likely demons. Could this mean these monsters will be harbingers of the apocalypse? If only we could find a way to harness their power for ourselves. The line of Lucis was chosen to eradicate evil from Eos. And with the Divine on their side, how could they fail? Thank you.